please welcome to the field the president of Quincy High School, led by head coach Kevin Carey. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where this afternoon the Quincy Presidents and the North Quincy Red Raiders will play for the 88th time for the City Championship Trophy. My name is Jonathan Clary and thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports. I'm uh, being joined by Jim Timmons up here in the booth. And Jim, uh, the teams have just taken the field, and uh, it's a different feeling when, between these two teams. Uh, normally it's a uh, 10 a.m. start on Thanksgiving morning, but uh, instead, because of uh, the COVID pandemic, we're here on a Sunday afternoon instead, but the excitement is still here in the stadium. Oh, yeah, definitely for the, the athletes, the coaches, the schools, uh, the excitement's still here. Uh, but the atmosphere is very, very different as we'll recount for you as the day goes along. Um, have a few things to talk about, but there are also some game preliminaries that were supposed to happen. So what we may do, John, is you and I can keep prattling on about things. I, I think they're going to go right to the National Anthem because uh, we're coming up to game time. But uh, there were supposed to be some other events, and if they occur, we'll cover them as they do. But for now, I think we're going to take a break for the National Anthem. Or perhaps they're going to take, nope, they're going to take the captains out on the field first. So. I see there's some, conf referee was pointing to the flag. And yeah. All right, yeah, so we are going to pause for the national anthem and we'll have the coin toss when we come back in just one second. At this time, could you please all rise and remove your hats and headgear for the playing of our national anthem. a recording of the uh, Quincy and North Quincy combined choir and uh, playing here uh, the, the beginning of each football game this season. You can see out in the center of the field right now on uh, number 11 Liam Hines the North Quincy High captain is about to be uh, met by Matt Kelly the Quincy High captain. There's two outstanding athletes, great kids um, they're what's uh, what we've seen for decades here in the Quincy North Quincy rivalry. Uh, the best that the city has to offer as far as uh, high school seniors, and there's two of them right there. All right, so coin was tossed, and looks like North has won the toss, and they're going to defer. All right, so North uh, has again won the toss. They elected to defer, and they're going to defend the north end zone. Quincy will defend the south end zone, and Quincy will be getting ready to be first with the ball here today on uh, Thanksgiving here in April between these two teams. Uh, Quincy High School comes into the game with a record of 1-2, and two, having beat Hanover back on March 27th. North Quincy with a record of 2-1, and one, having beat Dennis Yarmouth and also Hanover on April 1st. John, we're seeing the paradox of this whole, like, pandemic, social distancing and treatment and everything. They went to great measures to 
segregate uh, the captains, only sending out one from each team, and they stayed away from each other. <laughs> then as soon as the coin toss is over, the kids all jump together in a massive cluster and jump all over each other and scream at each other. And let's hope they can all continue to enjoy uh, health because that was an issue for the North Quincy team coming in. Um, Quincy came in COVID healthy, but otherwise a bit beleaguered. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a bit. But um, the North Quincy boys were on quarantine for a while. There were some issues there but apparently that's all been cleared up for today's game. Yeah, this game was supposed to be played uh, two days ago on Friday night at 7 p.m., and I know there was some excitement about that, about playing on a Friday night under the lights here at the stadium. Uh, but we are back to uh, under cloudy weather, and the lights are actually on just in case as well to make sure there's, um, it gets any darker. But uh, back to a day game here at the stadium, which these two teams are used to. Yeah, North will be kicking off. There's a little bit of an onshore breeze today. It's been here all weekend, and it's fairly strong. Um, the flag right now is blowing across the field, meaning um, the wind is coming from the Quincy side directly across the field. So the north-south difference isn't as significant. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how that affects the game today in any event. All right, Thomas Murray will kick it away to begin the game here for North Quincy and it's picked up by the Presidents and nice run back here so far for Quincy. Gabriel Rodriguez, the freshman for the Presidents, will bring it back over to about the 38 yard line. We'll see who they spart it and it looks like it's going to be the 39 where Rodriguez brings it back to. Yeah, Rodriguez is quite a story, John. In the opening game, um, he was quite a factor in... Um, Quincy's performance against Pembroke, although they lost the game, they played pretty well, and Rodriguez was part of the story. It was a kickoff return by him that uh, helped ignite the Quincy presidents who had been uh, having a rough time up to that point. So Rodriguez, an exciting guy. And here comes the Quincy high offense under quarterback Baretti, another guy we're going to have a lot to talk about. Uh, Birdie hands it off to number six, Captain Isaiah Steinberg, over to the right side. Steinberg gets across the 40 and up to about the 43-yard line for a gain of four and first down. Yeah, Drew Beretti is only a junior and saw his first action. We actually saw his first game under center uh, when we covered the Pembroke game. And he was poised. He looked really good. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. And he's definitely got leadership qualities. Um, so he looks good back there, and he's going to have to have a really high-level performance today for the Presidents to hang tough with the Red Raiders. So it was a gain of four, second down and six down for the Presidents. Beretti back to pass, first pass is complete over to Matt Kelly. Nice catch there by Kelly. He gets the first down and more across midfield and gets tackled at about the North Quincy 44. Down by yeah, Liam Hines and uh, Matt Kelly meeting each other again on the field. Uh, North's going to have to do a better job of keeping an eye on number 44 there. He was wide open out in the flat, and Beretti delivered the ball beautifully. Um, it was his first look. He got it there quickly. Well-designed play by the Presidents, a great execution. So Quincy off to a good start here, already in Red Raider territory early on in the first quarter. They mark Kelly down at the 45, so first and 10 now from the 45. Handoff for the Presidents goes to number 21, Jared Walker. And Walker will be right out in another first down. We'll see who they spotted. He gets up to the 35, and it should be enough for the first down. Yeah, Presidents are all fired up. Tremendous job over on the right side of the line by the Presidents. Um, Walker was already taking on linebackers uh, after handoff before he saw any red shirts. Uh, the Quincy president line we'll be talking about over the course of the game, but uh, did a tremendous job on that particular. All right, they're marking just short of the first down, but picking up the first down now is Isaiah Steinberg, and he's going to get a gain of four up to about the 31-yard line. Actually, they mark him down at the 32. Brandon Baker for the Raiders. Not a bad strategy here. Both teams are running focused teams. Um, North Quincy had a tremendous performance uh, two weeks ago, it would have been Liam Hines on the ground. The ground games are the strengths for both squads. But here the president is coming out and um, 
they're really establishing things. But the, early on, their dominance has been on the line. Uh, the offensive line has done a terrific job of opening seams for the running backs, Steinberg and Walker. Quincy at the north, Quincy 32 yard line, nine and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. Birdie looking down the right sideline and it is incomplete, was looking for Marion Robinson and Robinson turned into a defensive back there, had to knock it away from the north Quincy uh, defender, Hunter McIsaac. Yeah, John, you're exactly right. I was, I was going to make the same comment. McIsaac had his eyes on that ball and he had inside position and he thought he was going to pick that one off. Um, but nice job um, by the receiver of snapping the ball away. So the presidents live for another down here. It's going to be second and 10 from the North Quincy 32 yard line. 9.27 left to go here in the first quarter. Opening drive of the game. Second down and 10 for the presidents. And Brody's going to keep it himself wide open down the middle of the field, across the 20-yard line, and finally gets brought down at the 19. Great run there by Drew Beretti. Got to tell you something. There was a tremendous, tremendous block uh, by Riley O'Connell, junior offensive lineman, number 56. He's the right guard. He pulled on that play and did a terrific job of opening up a hole there. Um, Right now, Quincy is doing a terrific job on the line. I'm, I'm harping on that somewhat, but uh, it's because they've just been so successful and so in sync here on this first possession. Um, running backs have a lot of options once they get the ball here. And um, on that particular play, pulling right guard was the key to success. First and 10 from the 19 now for the Presidents. And Matt Kelly's going to take the snap directly for Quincy High. He's going to hand it off to Jared Walker over to the right side. And Jared Walker initially Walker got hit in the backfield, was able to get away from that tackle, and gets up to the 15. Yeah, so Quincy sticking with a running game, but trying to run a little variation on it, John. Um, as you said, Kelly took the direct snap. There was, they were looking to create a little bit of confusion on the part of the Red Raiders, and um, North Quincy stayed home made the stop, uh, but nonetheless, first down pickup of four yards, you'll take that any time when you're uh, coming out in the running game. So, presidents continue to move here. North Quincy's backed up in its red zone. Boys are gonna have to step up defensively. Kelly again will take the snap for the presidents. And he's going to hand off to Isaiah Steinberg. Steinberg, nice cut back up to the left side, gets across the middle of the field. And we'll see where they mark him down. He was quickly met by a host of Red Raiders. And it looks like he's going to get up to about the 12-yard line. Yeah, you called it there, John. The cutback was the key. Uh, terrific job by Steinberg, who's a real shifty and talented running back. We've been talking about him for a few years now. And it's unfortunate that you know, well, any of the athletes got uh, short changes here, but a guy like Steinberg uh, really looking forward to this season. So it's going to be one of his chances to shine here as a senior and hasn't seen as much action as he would have wished. That time Ryan Craig was in on the tackle, John. Our third in about two now for the presence. Kelly again. Trying to fake the handoff. He's going to keep it himself. Nice job by the uh, Raiders, excuse me, to come in. And oh, Kelly might have lost a yard in the play. We'll see where they mark him down. Nonetheless, we'll bring a fourth down for the Presidents. Yeah, I beg your pardon. I said Ryan Craig earlier. He's actually the head coach. And it's his son, Matt, who's uh, really stepped up there. Matt Craig was the one who made that tackle unassisted. Um, he's been doing an excellent job of plugging the gaps. We mentioned that Quincy was winning so far the battle and the line play so Craig stepping up as he has he's number 44 um, for North Quincy High you'll see him there in the middle of the field he's been reading the gaps properly so far and really getting his nose in on the ball so fourth and four now for the presence Drew Beretti back in the game at quarterback Matthew Kelly goes to the left in the slot in fourth and four Beretti looking to pass over to the left side, and it is incomplete. Was looking to find Isaiah Steinberg in the flat, but nice defense there by North Quincy, and it'll be a turnover on downs. Yeah, Brendan Hines, number nine. The Hines brothers 
Brendan and Liam will be talking about them a lot for North Quincy. He was out there one-on-one with Steinberg. As a result, Baretti's pass, he was putting the ball where Isaiah would have a chance, but not Hines. And so it was slightly overthrown. And as you mentioned, John, um, Baretti was on the sideline for a couple of plays, so he had to come in and deliver one. And slightly overthrown. And so North Quincy holds. Uh, Quincy has a nice first drive stalling out at the North Quincy 12. So we have an early timeout here. Who called that one, John? I believe it was an official timeout for a, uh, a water break slash mask break uh, for the teams down on the field with 6.02 left to go here in the first quarter. Well, very good. Now the Red Raiders, the offense is going to come on the field and... Um, be very interesting to see. Quincy's defense, they've had a few issues this year with health. Um, during our pregame, we learned that uh, the Quincy High seniors, several of them are dinged up. Um, and one of the things we expected with the shortened spring season, John, especially the fact that it was announced for the first time in January that the kids would be able to play football. And they had to essentially be ready in five weeks and um, that's very, very demanding. So uh, we expected that there'd be a lot of injuries. And while fortuitously there's been not a lot of severe injuries, there have been a lot of kids get dinged up here. And um, that's been a particular problem for Quincy High School. Uh, a lot of their seniors that they count on. We mentioned in the Pembroke game that depth would be an issue. Pembroke game being the first Quincy game, depth would be an issue uh, for the presidents. Well, while the guys are on the field, they're a little dinged up, so we'll see how they react here um, today. All right, so North Quincy will come out onto the field. Cooper Hansen is the Raiders quarterback, and he's going to hand it off quickly up the middle. That's number 44, Matt Craig, and the Quincy Matt defense is right there to hold him up. And they're going to say no gain for Craig, so bring up second down and 10. Well, you saw Matt Kelly there. Um, he was playing the whistle, as they say. And um, he didn't want to stop until there was a body on the ground. So terrific determination by number 44 for the presidents. Right, so again, no gain on that play. Second down and 10 for the Raiders. Hines gets the carry. Nice cut back by Hines over to the left side up the middle. And he's going to get across the 20 up to about the 22 yard line. Nice cut back, as I said. And it sprung Hines free for a gain of about eight. Yeah, one of the things you can see about Liam Hines, um, it's very evident. He's, he worked out very hard all winter. And uh, he's got a lot of bulk, upper body strength. Uh, sophomore year, when we first saw him, um, you realize very quickly what type of speed he had. He's a, a fast runner. He's also a quick athlete, but he's added to those two uh, a lot of physical bulk, so he's hard to take down. With that nice cutback, John, he brought the Red Raiders up to a third and one situation, so it's the first big play for North Quincy's offense. Coming up on four minutes and 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Hansen will keep it himself, and he dives forward enough for the first down. They're going to mark him down at the 24-yard line. Yeah, nice decision by Junior Cooper Hansen. He just he took a look at the alignment right in front of him there, and uh, that was all about getting the first down. So terrific job by the junior. Red Raiders pick up a first down here. So both offenses coming out early and getting themselves established. Um, Red Raiders are going to be first and 10 from their 24, John. All right, under four minutes to go now here in the first quarter. I formation behind Hanson. Hines will get the carry up the middle. And nice push there by the offensive line for the Raiders. And Hines will get all the way up to about the 29-yard line for a gain of five on first down. Well, early on, um, we're seeing one little dynamic that uh, is going to be a tough one 
for Quincy High School. The same numbers that are out on the field, offensive linemen, um, these are the guys who are out now playing on the defensive side of the ball as well. In particular, North Quincy's running, their left-handed running, running at the right side over where Quincy, we'll talk about the two down linemen for Quincy in a moment, over on the right side of the Quincy defense. Second and five for the Raiders. Hines again on the carry. Springs free up the middle. Cuts back over to the side and will finally get brought down. But a nice run there by Liam Hines all the way up to the 42-yard line. Yeah, terrific job by Liam Hines there. And over on that right side, number 56, Riley O'Connell, and uh, number 53, Luke Murphy, are guys who were out on the field with the offense. They were part of that uh, impressive first series offensive line performance that we were talking about. Uh, but they've had to stay out on the field now defensively. And uh, this is going to be an issue for the presidents. They're going to have to address somehow is, uh, you know, the weather is such that conditioning is going to be uh, not a, a bi as big a factor, but they got to get these guys off the field for a break once in a while or third or fourth quarter is going to be tough for Quincy. Is Craig. Craig and Craig will go over to the left side, gets across the 45 and out of bounds at the 46 yard line. The other thing we're seeing here, John, is uh, these guys are really banging at each other. Um, there's a lot of off the ball, like you can see uh, if you're following the ball itself, you see things going on. There's a flag here. I'm not sure what the call is going to be, but there's a lot of off the ball banging too. And um, we got a hold against North, so that's going to come hold. back. So while the weather is such that conditioning, uh, the boys should be able to get through this game a um, little differently than had it been played yesterday, for example, where it was hot and people wore down more quickly. Um, Quincy's going to be tested if they don't figure out a way to rotate some guys in, and they may not be able to because of depth issues. So um, some of these boys are going to have tough afternoon and you may see that in the third or fourth quarter typically late in the third quarter or as the fourth quarter wears on uh, teams that are getting worn out you start to see it so North's going to commit to this running game and it could take its toll over the course of this afternoon we'll see all right, so with the 10-yard penalty, it will be first and 20 now for the Raiders back at their own 32-yard line under two minutes to go here in the quarter Tyler Lee goes in motion for North Quincy. Liam Hines gets the carry, and he'll get across the 35 up to about the 36-yard line before he is brought down. Yeah, see, there's some more chippiness, and I'll tell you, we're probably, kids are going to get away with things maybe one more time, and we'll start to see flags, but um, it's a little extra pushing and shoving going on in the excitement of this particular game here, and coach has got to get the boys to tighten that up. So Norris looking at a uh, second, and 16. second and 15 here. Still sticking to the running game though, John. We've got two wide outs, either side. All right, and Cooper Hanson, the quarterback under center. Under a minute to go now in the quarter. Lee again goes in motion. Hines with the carry over to the right side this time. And he gets tripped up, but was able to get up to about the 40-yard line. So it's yeah, they, five. They've got Craig as the up back. Um, we talked about him earlier, Matt Craig. Um, he's in your typical, you know, full black, a full back blocking back position, and Hines is the tailback. And um, each handoff has been a little bit of a delayed handoff. Liam's getting a chance to look over his options here. And, um, you know, that was a five-yard gain, but, uh, well, maybe closer to a four-yard gain. And when you're looking at a second and 15, that's just not quite enough. So North's going to be third and very long here, and we've got another timeout. Actually, it looks like they're going to let the clock run out of the quarter, oh, Jim, and pardon. that is the yeah, end of the first, the quarter. first quarter. And, and when we come back with the seconds, North Quincy will have a third and 12, but we are scoreless after one period of play here between Quincy and North Quincy. Yeah, we missed clock cam, John. We gotta get that back. That's another casualty of the pandemic. Um, but we do have uh, this scoreboard here that's just 
really quite something at Veterans Stadium. It's unfortunate uh, there's not a lot of people here uh, because of how the MIAA has uh, regulated attendance at, at games. Um, but when you get, a, get an opportunity in the fall to get back into the stadium, it's really, really quite something. This is just a, it's always been a venerable venue, but uh, it's now a real special place in terms of we've got some terrific amenities courtesy of the Boston Cannons, like plastic back seats on the home side of the field and a scoreboard that's second to none in the region, really, uh, perhaps other than at Gillette. So it's a great facility, and it'll be nice when we can get people back into it. You can see at the uh, top of the picture here the Quincy High side of the field, and uh, you know, the parents are pretty equally split between the two sets of bleachers, but they're in here, they're trying to sit together, parents of the players, it makes it more enjoyable for them, but uh, all the distancing and everything has been enforced by Quincy, and, uh, Quincy Public Schools, and got to get our cameraman to refer, there you go. All right, it is a screen pass over to number 88, Colm Gary, and Quincy is quickly in to bring up and bring him down number 56, Riley O'Connell on the tackle, and maybe a gain of one in the play, and we have fourth down now for the Raiders. So that penalty really hurt the Red Raiders. They were getting some momentum going, and they were moving, but a holding call um, took a big gain off the board, and set the Red Raiders back and they never recovered. So they're going to be punting the ball away. Presidents are going to get their second shot with the ball in this first half. For the Raiders. And Thomas Murray will be kicking it away for North Quincy. Nice high kick there by Murray. And it's going to be fielded by the Presidents at their own 24-yard line. Number 14, Will Pulliff on the return. And he's going to get a gain of maybe about 10 yards on the return before he's brought down. Yeah, nice job by Plouffe. Um, he took his time, he made the clean catch, and then ran it right up the middle. Red Raider special teams have been solid all year, and they did a good job on that particular play, John. So it was good coverage on the play. Um, in on the tackle, there were a couple of uh, folks, but I just happened to pick up Mike Gorman, number 34, junior, um, in on the tackle. So we'll give him the credit and uh, hope there's more from Mike today. So he's bought the ball at the 32-yard line. So we first and 10 for the Presidents. 11.05 left to go in the second quarter. Kelly on the center again. He's going to hand it off to Isaiah Steinberg. Steinberg with a nice run there. Gets up to about the 40-yard line. Steinberg Johnson to the 40. You know, Matt Kelly, it's, uh, he's, he's quite a story. You see him heading over to his uh, coach to get the next play. But you're talking about a guy who's built like and plays and is, in all respects, a linebacker. Um, but he's also the kicker for the team. Now he's playing quarterback. Um, and I think that's reflective of a focus on the run game. I'm not sure. can try to find out if there were any health issues um, with respect to uh, Beretti, but hopefully that's not the case. But um, Matt Kelly is just a, he's not going to come off the field today till the final, final whistle. So. One guy from North Quincy who almost never comes off the field either is Matt Craig, but he just walked off. Looked like he is holding his wrist. I'm not sure if, uh, if it's finger or his hand or whatnot, but he came off the field, and trainers over there talking to him now, so hopefully he's okay, but he's an important part of this Raider team. Oh, yeah, that would be a huge issue for the Red Raiders if they lose him. Eight-yard gain on first down. Kelly again, he fakes the pass, and he's going to go nowhere quickly. He's brought down by two Raiders there. And it looked like leading the charge was number 66, Brandon Baker. Yeah, Baker did a terrific job there, John. He didn't bite on the fake at all, and he just wrapped up Kelly. And we are just talking about him. That's a young man who's he's got the build and the strength and the power of a linebacker. And Baker just wrapped him up and uh, held on, made the tackle. So terrific play. So this is going to be a, a third and about six for uh, the Presidents. 
both defenses playing solidly here, John, early on. All right, presidents line up three receivers to the right. Kelly again. And he was looking to hand it off to Steinberg, but he had to keep it himself because there were three Raiders charging in, and he's going to get brought down and sacked behind for a big loss. Looked like it was Tyler Lee who was coming up and leading the charge for North Quincy. Yeah, terrific job by the Red Raiders of focusing there on 44 and making the proper read. Kelly did not have a chance to, uh, that was an option play, uh, but he didn't really have any options at the point in time that the... Uh, Red Church descended upon him. So five, North Quincy eight, holds eight, here. For the president. Quincy will be kicking, uh, punting it away. Uh, Marion Robinson is back to do the kicking. Punting, rather, I'll say. And the kick goes off the side of his foot, and it's going to bounce out of bounds. Robinson Let's see, uh, up to the Quincy 48. So tough break there for the presidents. And, but North Quincy will have great field position to begin this drive. Yeah, terrific field position. They never established themselves in terms of uh, field position on that first possession. We'll see how they do here as they're going to start on the Quincy side of the field. First and ten. Um, been watching the flag, John. There's been a little bit of swirling, but basically it's been quiet. Neither side has uh, gone to the air yet, at least successfully. We recall the... Uh, I beg your pardon, no, Beretti had one out into the flat early on, but neither side's emphasized the air game, we'll say that, and North certainly hasn't gone to the air yet. We'll see what they do here on this possession. All right, Cooper Hansen's going to hand it off, and nice run here for first down. Ball comes loose. Bumble on the play. Let's see what happens here. It looked like it was Hunter McIsaac on the carry. And flag is thrown on the play. The saying it's North Quincy ball, two flags on the play now. Yeah, Coach Craig is pretty upset over that because, um, you know, he had a player who lost his composure and he smartly got right in on it. Um, we've got some lobbying going on here by Baker. Trying to explain to the officials what actually happened out on the field at the time. <laughs> I don't know that that's always uh, persuasive, but it looks like, uh, who knows? You're going to say it's a personal foul against the presidents. Yeah. So it'll be a 15-yard penalty, 15-yard uh, penalty, place the ball at the and it goes all the way up to the 29-yard line. First hey, maybe, maybe Brandon Baker can join the, uh, the roster of North Quincy High grads successful in the lawyering profession. He just... Uh, Put forth a persuasive argument under pressure. Can join the great Tom Kiley in that regard. So nice job by Baker. Red Raiders, big penalty. They were hurt by one in their first possession. Let's see what they do with this penalty on the second possession. All right, first and 10 for North Quincy. Liam Hines gets the pitch over to the left side, crosses the 30, and makes one man miss, and makes another man miss, and picks up an extra three or four yards because of it, and we get all the way up to about the 16-yard line. Just a terrific run by Hines, and a lot of that was individual effort. Um, he got outside, had a little green space, but uh, there were white shirts around him. He evaded a tackle, as you said, John, and uh, that's a nice run for a strong gain. Now the Red Raiders knocking on the door here. They're at the 22 yard line. And there's some hands on the hips there, uh, you see on the white shirts. Uh, the Quincy High kids, some of them have been on the field here for a long time and it's starting to show that they're getting a bit worn down early. Muhammad Khan, the captain for the presence, was in on that last tackle. Hand goes to number 28, that's Thomas Murray. 28, Thomas and Murray he's gonna get to about the 13 yard line. 15. Yeah, terrific cutback by Murray. North keeps the clock running. We're down under seven minutes here. And um, they're starting to get some momentum here, John, the North Quincy offense. So they do mark the ball down at the 13-yard line. Second down and six now for North Quincy. 540 left to go here. Excuse me, 640 left to go here in the second quarter.
Cooper Hanson, the quarterback, under center. Hines again on the carry over to the left side, crosses the 10, and will get pushed out of bounds at about the 9-yard line, make it the 8 where they mark him out of bounds. Yeah, terrific play by uh, Clay Corley, a junior, um, because Hines was just about to turn it upfield there. Corley hit him. Uh, I mentioned about the upper body strength. Well, Corley looked like a guy who could deliver a shot there on that play. He got Hines out of bounds at the 12-yard uh, line here, so the North March continues. Uh, they have a uh, third and short here, John. Again, I formation for the Raiders. As you said, Jim, third and about one yard. Hines, he'll pick up that one yard and a little bit more, trying to keep his legs moving. He'll get to the five-yard line and up for the first down. Number 44, Matt Kelly. So they do mark him down at the five yard line, so it'll be first and goal now for North Quincy as we come up on six minutes to go here in the quarter. From the Quincy five yard line. Yeah, you know, I mentioned the um, Quincy offensive line. Well, we got to throw some praise the Red Raiders direction as well. Um, there's two guys over on the left side. Um, Hen Harry Gaudiano, who's a junior, and his cohort next to him, number 78, the left guard, uh, Sam Accazzini, another junior. They're two big guys, and right now they've been uh, really controlling that left side, Quincy's right side, for Liam Hines. And here he goes again, same direction. Hines spins. up the middle, steps, and will go into the end zone. Great run there by Liam Hines, kept his feet moving, and will go into the end zone for the touchdown. Looked like he was getting some help there from his offensive line. Uh, number 77, uh, Dean Biko, was pushing him in there as well. Yeah, that was uh, just a very powerful and kind of churning drive by the Red Raiders. And uh, now they're going to be kicking the point after. Um, and, you know, normally one of your better athletes is your holder, and in this case it's the guy who scored the touchdown, Liam Hines. So Hines is going to hold, and uh, Tom Murray, the junior, Blasted through. Well done. So perfectly executed. There was a good snap, good hold, and Murray blasted it through. And the Red Raiders draw first blood here, John, um, after a pretty successful Quincy drive on the first possession. Um, North Quincy has kind of slowly asserted itself here. And uh, on that particular drive, they really controlled the line play, which was the story. So um, we'll see how Quincy adjusts as uh, they're now facing a 7 nothing deficit. Right, so as you said, Jim, with 5.40 left to go here in the second quarter, North Quincy strikes first and takes a 7 nothing lead. I should correct myself. I, I said Dean Biko. It's Reen Biko who was the yeah. offensive lineman to uh, help push in Liam Hines there. So I want to apologize to Reen as he gets the credit there where it's due. And again, 5.40 left to go, 7 nothing North on top. I want to remind all of our viewers, you can log on to Quincy Access TV's website at www.qatv.org for program schedules, membership information, and replays of high school sports as well. So again, qatv.org for all that information. Yeah, John, can you talk a minute during the break about the streaming and the fact we have a lot of our games up now um, basically on demand? Yep, we certainly do. Uh, people can log on to qatv.org slash sports uh, and see all the um, games that we've covered this season. So football, basketball, um, soccer, volleyball, dating back into the fall. And we'll have all the other spring sports there on our website as well. And people can also log on to our website for 24-7 um, live streaming of Channel 8 and Channel 9. Uh, Channel 8's our public access channel and Channel 9 the government access channel. So encourage everyone to log on and browse around and uh, watch some games if you can't catch them live on QATV. Yeah, I'd say those of you who have uh, sleeping disorders, you put a game on and listen to me for like a quarter, <laughs> you're going to be out cold. So give that strong consideration. 
um, if you've been having problems getting to sleep at night. All right. Good selling point for our website. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bedtime stories with Jim Timmons, QATV Sports. All right, the Red Raiders get down the field to cover that kickoff uh, pretty well. Another kind of squib kicker by Murray, soccer style kicker, and he finds a little seam and gets it down past the front two lines very successfully. So. Um, Quincy's going to start just outside their 30, and let's see how they adapt here. Um, Drew Beretti's been out for uh, out from under center, I should say, for most of this first half. And here comes Mr. Kelly again. So Matt Kelly's going to run the show from the quarterback position. Gabe Rodriguez had the return there for the Presidents, and they're going to start at their own 31-yard line. And as you said, Jim Kelly takes the snap, hand off to the right side. Jared Walker trying to fight his way over to the right side. And nice job there by North Quincy to pursue. Thomas Murray gets off the bottom of the pile. Also over there was number 44, Matt Craig. Number 21. Yeah, those two guys together on the field are just a real dynamic duo. They're the linebackers who, when a team is running oriented, you're going to hear those names. The passing game, you've got the Heinz brothers back there and a few other uh, very talented athletes as well that we talk about. But right now, um, you know, Craig is, is doing a terrific job, Murray as well. And um, it's a very difficult linebacking crew to run against here. Number 34, Michael Gorman was also in there for North Quincy. Correct. Pitch yeah. over to the left side to Isaiah Steinberg. And he's trying to find a hole and nothing there, but he's able to spread it out a little bit. And they're going to mark him down at the 30. Let's see where they mark him down. The 38, it looks like. To the 38-yard line. That'll bring up third and three for the president. So this is a big third down for uh, Quincy. Um, we're ticking down to four minutes to go in the first half, John. And uh, you know the presidents want to establish something here before they go to the locker room. North's going to get the second half kickoff, so this could be the last chance for the president offense to be on the field for a little while. They'd like to make something happen in what has been a low-scoring game so far. And well, Steinberg, uh, Steinberg had some more space here, but he slipped, but he'll pick up the first down. Steinberg Johnson. And there's a man down for North Quincy as well, and he looks like he's holding his knee. Yeah, see, this is this is the issue you run into that we've talked about, about kids getting dinged up. Um, that's uh, number 52, Mike Palastretti. He's a, uh, well, he came in from, it looked like a linebacker type position. But uh, clearly, he took a helmet on the kneecap, either that or his shoulder pads. Um, I think I'm very hopeful he was banging his fists in frustration over the pain, but that the pain's more of an impact thing than any sort of ligament thing. Oh, are you running a replay here, John? Yeah, I'm able to rewind our live stream up here in the uh, in the booth and just trying to see if we can get an idea of what happened here. Yeah, I think he caught a helmet on his knee. Okay, so he was the outside lineman, and let's see. Oh, I, looks like he might have got caught in the turf there, Jim. My cleat might have twisted his knee. All right, yeah. Yeah, and someone landed on his foot right around the same time, so you could be right. That's unfortunate. So he had lined up on the outside. He was the left defensive end. Um, yeah, and that doesn't, that doesn't look good. Look at how it's, okay. it's kind of the lower limb is just kind of flopping around. That's not looking too good. So we're very sorry uh, to see Mike Paulistretti leaving the field in that fashion. Uh, he's been doing very well so far. Um, a junior, he's an offensive and defensive lineman. He was out on the left side, and as you said, John, it looked like something happened and his foot got caught in the turf. So. From their own 43 yard line. Well, hopefully, Mike's okay. Back to action here. It'll be first and 10 for the Presidents. Ball at their own 43 yard line. 
Send a man in motion. It's number 23, Stephen Gallant, over to the right side. And Gallant gets up to about the 49 yard line. Actually, I think I say he stepped out of bounds at the 47. Well, nice job by Gallant because actually that play set up a little slowly. I'm sure that wasn't quite the level of execution that Coach Carey would have liked to have seen. But uh, Gallant was able to make something out of it. Um, he turned the corner, picked up about four. So, And what that does too, John, and this is really what Quincy's trying to do, they want to keep North off balance defensively. They were trying to get to the outside there make the linebackers move a little bit because the linebackers have been coming up and plugging gaps early so it's a nice call and uh, nice individual effort by Gallant. See that's what we're talking about the Quincy game so far running game rather uh, after all the success they had in that first possession where they just got right down the field and followed the offensive line um, Terrifically, North made a couple of adjustments, and one of them was those talented linebackers we talked about earlier. Um, Craig, Murray, and Gorman, they are two or three yards back behind their linemen and plugging gaps very, very quickly. Harry Guadiano and Declan Gary came in on the tackle on that last play for the Raiders. Yeah, Norris really committing to stopping the run here. So Quincy with a little counter. They've got four receivers now. Let's see what happens here. Third and eight for the Presidents. Just under two minutes to go now here in the second quarter. Kelly looking to pass down to the left sideline. And it is complete. And a big yeah, first down complete. for North Quincy. It's complete to Ciro Mora all the way up to the North Quincy 25-yard line. Yeah, great, great play there by Quincy. Well designed. Um, Kelly looked. He saw the guy who had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he went to him. And as you said, Mora, it was uh, just a little turn-in route, basically. He got behind the defensive back, and then um, it was wide open. And uh, the other thing is Kelly threw that ball about 35 yards. We talked about the wind. Uh, that was not a factor there. And so Quincy doing exactly what they would hope to do. They've got 135 left here in this second half, uh, first half rather, second quarter, first half. And um, they're now in the red zone, John, after a very successful third down trek to the air there. We're going to find out at halftime what's, what's going on with um, Beretti because um, he has been out for a while now and uh, not a lot of teams that can plug a linebacker in the quarterback spot and have the type of success Quincy's having here. So, All right, Quincy called a timeout down the field. And as you said, Jim, with 1.35 left to go in the quarter, they spot the ball at the 23-yard line. How many timeouts does that leave Quincy with now, John? Two. Okay. So good time out by the coaching staff there, trying to get the kids refocused. They've got, they're going with that four receiver set again, trying to take away the uh, linebacker edge. And they hand it off to Jared Walker. He is met immediately, though, by one, two, three, four Raiders. Declan Gary in there, as well as number 34, Michael Gorman, Matt Craig in there as well for North Quincy. And it's going to be a big loss. Also in there was Brandon Baker. By a host of yeah, there's two things there with that one. Uh, loss of time as well. Loss of yardage and loss of time. Quincy's going to get back to the line and they're going to be under a minute. So that was a huge play by the North defense. Quincy just has had trouble inside the tackles here. That has not been a uh, fertile place for the Quincy running game. So they're going to start to look outside again, we're sure. They've got a four receiver set again, John, for Kelly. Second down in 12. Kelly passes over the middle and it is complete to number 85, Clayton Corley. And that'll be enough for a first down. And Quincy Corley. calls a timeout quickly. They spot the ball at the 10 yard line. I'll tell you what, that was a perfectly thrown ball and a very gutsy catch by Corley. He just did a little seam route right down the field. And as soon as he got behind the linebackers, Kelly delivered the ball perfectly thrown and uh, 
That was both well designed and well executed, John. And as you said, Quincy gets a quick timeout. There's what, 32 seconds left, John? Uh, 42. 42. Oh, it's, yeah, I got you. 42 left, and um, Quincy's got one more timeout. So they're going to safely get three plays, I would imagine. Um, Kelly has been going over to the sideline for each, you know, after each play to get the, the new offensive call. They're going to have to take that one off the board. I would presume that Quincy's going to get two plays here to their guys so that they can go no huddle on at least one. But they're inside the 10. That's the other thing. Um, they've got, uh, isn't Matt Kelly the place kicker as well? Doesn't he, uh, he kicks field goals? Yep. So, I mean, Kelly one way or another is going to have opportunities to get the presidents on the board. We'll see what happens here. This is a big, big, uh, you know, set of plays here for both teams as they head to the locker room. All right, first and goal from the nine for the Presidents. Kelly gets it, hands it off to Steinberg. Steinberg, nice cut up the middle into the five yard line and up to about the three. And. All right, they get a. Quincy either. calls their final timeout. As Kevin Carey ran down the sideline, and they're going to stop it with 30 Time seconds. Well, the kids are going to have to get more time sensitive here. Some of them were jumping around and everything, and um, they're going to have to be aware now that with no timeouts left, they're going to have to react more quickly if they don't get in the end zone. So this is going to be interesting. Um, Quincy's been able to move the ball when they get outside the tackles. Um, and now that we're inside the five, that's kind of a, this is going to be an interesting uh, choice of decisions. Whether um, Coach Carey stays with Kelly in the air here, um, or, and they were over on the left hash mark, so we can look for maybe something coming, you know, right-sided, coming to the right or lower edge of your screen here. Maybe a passing play or something, just to keep an eye on the clock. So, because um, the clock stops at an incompletion, and uh, obviously Quincy does not want to be stopped short outside the end zone because we're under 30 seconds. So it's going to be very interesting here. All right, Kelly lines up with Jared Walker to his left and Isaiah Steinberg behind him. Yeah, it looks like a running. Steinberg gets the ball, and he's going to be stopped short of the goal line, it looks like. Actually, last minute effort, and they're going to mark him down at the one-yard line. Now, see, you're seeing some very alert uh, Ciro Mora trying to get them to spike the ball, stop the clock. And Kelly does spike the ball. It shows 10 seconds on the clock, but he spiked it around 11. We'll see if they adjust the clock or not. Well, Mora was really alert. Good for him. Um, that's what we're talking about. I'm sure the coaches talked about it as they were breaking that final timeout huddle, but they're down at the one yard line, on the, or two yard line rather. On that last play, John, I got a big kick when the running back got stopped. Kelly was at the back of the pack, blasting away, trying to push him into the end zone. So um, this is going to be strength against strength. We need the, the, or from the president perspective, they need their. Uh, Offensive line to step up the way it looked in the first quarter. And then, yeah, there it is, going back to the one. From the North Quincy perspective, those linebackers really need to step up here. This is going to be a big play. And, um, I mean, frankly, the way things have gone, we can expect it to probably be the last play of the first half. So, Well, Jim, it's fourth and goal from the one for the Presidents. As you said, there's 10 seconds left to go here in the first half. Terrific drive. I, 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 even if this happens to fail or stall out, at least the presidents reestablish something as they go to the locker room. So here it is, and uh, let's see how the boys reacted. Again, it's a running formation here. Timeout. And North Quincy has called a timeout. So the coaching staff got a look at what Quincy was coming with and what the boys should expect. And uh, we see Ryan Craig talking to his guys here. 
telling him what they saw. It's going to be very interesting, John. Uh, Quincy came out with a running formation, and it looked like um, with two good choices in the backfield, actually there's three. You had Walker, Steinberg, and of course Kelly, but that it's going to be one of those three who de determines the president's fate here. The weather's held up pretty well, John. We were concerned about showers, but um, there's been, you know, it's been a little bit of a cool day, which is actually to the advantage of the uh, the athletes. And no rain, no real wind influences, so nothing influencing the the uh, fact, you know, the game itself. And uh, we'll see. It's a low-scoring battle so far, and be very interesting to see heading into the locker room whether it's the Red Raiders all fired up after a stop or if Quincy can reestablish itself and then uh, get their legs back onto them during the halftime break. So here they come. Going to be very interesting, John. All right, again, ball is at the one yard line. Fourth and goal for the Presidents. North Quincy on top, seven to nothing. And there are 10 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Okay, now they have Kelly right under center. They've been going with uh, shotgun, but he's right under center this time. All right, Kelly, he, ball comes loose, and North Quincy's recovered it. Fumble on the play. You can see Kelly, Jim, he was starting to run in before he really had control of the ball, and didn't get it, he fumbles it, and North Quincy recovers. Huge play, and who, who was it but Matt Craig who got on the ball and uh, terrific job, terrific job by Matt Craig, and he is all fired up, big number 44. Um, so Kelly was uh, looking, looking at the seam that he was going to take into the end zone there, and you saw that we had actually a terrific camera shot. Um, uh, who's doing our camera work today, John? Ryan McWade. Mc well, <laughs> Ryan McWade, excuse me. I'm just going to say Craig. <laughs> yeah, well, just a terrific job there. He and our viewers just zoomed right in on what happened there. Um, and uh, Matt Kelly looking to run the ball in. Um, took his eyes off and uh, was kind of looking at where he was going to go and uh, lost focus on the snap. And Craig was right there on top of the ball. So terrific job by the Red Raiders to step up and come up with a huge stop as we, well, I was going to say head to the locker room, but it's they're going to go to their respective corners of the field for a break at halftime. All right, so Jim, it is halftime here at Veterans Memorial Stadium, and the North Quincy Raiders lead the Crosstown rival Quincy Presidents by a score of 7 to nothing. Jim and I will take a quick break, and in about 10 minutes, we'll be back with second half coverage, so we hope you stay tuned. At this time, please welcome to midfield the North Quincy High School cheerleading team under the direction of Coach Brooke Lally. Let's give them a round of applause. for the North Quincy High School cheerleaders. Now let's welcome to the field the Quincy High School cheerleading team under the direction of Coach Valerie Chen.
Welcome back, everyone, to Veterans Memorial Stadium. We're at the half. North Quincy leads Quincy by a score of seven to nothing. We were able to get a, uh, a report at the half, Jim, that uh, Quincy starting quarterback Drew Beretti has a hamstring injury and he's questionable to return for the second half. So we'll see what happens here in the second half. Matt Kelly's been doing a good job for the presidents in the meantime. So we'll see if Beretti can come back. Yeah, well, that's precisely the thing we were talking about in the opening is uh, that's the type of injury that you sustain when, you know, the, you're in this type of shortened season environment. Um, big, big loss for the presidents. Uh, you know, they have been hamstrung offensively because um, Kelly, who's out there, you know, the entire time he's defensively offensively and everything he should be a guy who's an asset to your offense not the guy running it not the guy quarterbacking it so Quincy's had to adjust on the fly to that John it somewhat explains at least a little bit the uh, you know the focus on the running game or commitment to the running game but you know one of the issues is that um, that uh, I should say not an issue, but one of the interesting byproducts of this has been Matt Kelly throwing the ball really well. He's had tremendous success. So I think there's an issue with the clock. Well, actually, it's the uh, the officials are just coming back out onto the field. The the players were ready before the officials, which is the opposite of what normally happens. Uh -huh. uh, but the officials are coming back out and getting ready. We were to, we might have got some nice action in. <laughs> You know, um, I thought we're supposed to be 12-minute quarters. It is. I think part of it is the uh, the uh, the clock official is just starting to get back up to the the booth gotcha. as well. Understood. And uh, I think it was 13 minutes for the half, but the officials are looking at that as well. Yeah. Interesting. You would think that these guys would uh, be as eager as anyone to keep this game moving along directly, but. Um, in any event, we're back out. Uh, the clock has just been adjusted to 12 minutes. So as I was saying earlier, um, you know, the injury to Beretti is going to be a factor here in the second half. We'll see what adjustments were made at halftime. And uh, now the president's kicking off. All right, Sierra Moore is going to kick it high for the president. It's going to be fielded at the 21-yard line by North Quincy. And... Almost a great tackle there, but still on his feet is number 33, Nick Pereira for the Raiders, running backwards and finally bringing him down, number 32, Gabriel Rodriguez, who almost made the initial tackle and comes up to make the tackle. Well, you know, you tip your hat to Nick Pereira for determination, but uh, 
I think most of us could identify the fact that number 33 is only a sophomore when you see him running backwards as he had. Um, and you're thinking to yourself, geez, just, just get down, buddy. Don't go backwards. So, well, Nick got his first lesson, and he's getting some pats on the helmet from his coaches, which you like to see. They appreciate the determination, but we expect over the next few years we won't see number 33 going backwards anymore. <laughs> so here right. come the Red Raiders. And they spot the ball at the 20-yard line, so that's where North Quincy will start the second half. Liam Hines, big open space, just does get tripped up, though, but he'll still have a nice gain on first down up to about the 30-yard line. Looked like it was Matt Kelly who got his hand in there to trip up Liam Hines. Otherwise, Hines would have had a clear open space. Yeah, nice nine-yard nine pickup on first down coming out of the locker room. You gotta love to see that, and it's uh, really something to have the backfield the Red Raiders have. Very imposing. You've got Craig as the up back, the blocking back, followed by Hines, who's fast, very shifty, and as we said, he's he's got some bulk on him as well. So. Now the Red Raiders come with a split backfield. A little bit of confusion there before they even set. A couple of the uh, the right side of the line did a little jumping around. Let's see what happens here. So they're going to call a false start on North Quincy, so they'll bring him back five yards to the 24. It's interesting. The center had not even set under the ball, uh, set on the ball yet, and I'm not quite sure about that one, but. In any event, it's going to be second and uh, about six now for the Red Raiders. If you recall in the first half, John, right in the same spot, a penalty took a drive off the boards for the Red Raiders. They were forced to punt it away. Let's see how they adjust to this penalty here. All right, second down and six for North Quincy. Hines on the carry up the middle. And is able to scoot to the right to get across the line of scrimmage up to about the 30-yard line. It should be enough for the first down. Close to a first down. Yeah, they're giving them the first down. Moving the sticks. So the Red Raiders this time do not get hurt. One thing that's been very impressive, John, both teams have, uh, their execution has been terrific for the most part. Other than that false start, uh, there really haven't been any penalties assessed against the lines respective lines and when you watch the Red Raiders um, you know they've really executed crisply so far in this ball game so um, they come out with a that's a massive All right, first and ten for North Quincy pitch to Liam Hines over to the right side and he's able to turn it up, get across the 40-yard line, and knocked out of bounds at about the 45-yard line, and it'll be another first down for North. Yeah, there you saw the upper body strength we talked about earlier for Hines. Uh, he had a stiff arm there as he got to the outside, and he was just physically superior there as he turned the corner. I was uh, mentioning earlier, the Red Raiders have a massive commitment to the run. They've got seven guys up on the line. They've got their offensive linemen, and then they have uh, uh, two tight end set where both tight ends are obviously blocking, but you see it right there now. You got seven guys on the line, and they are just grinding away here. Thomas Murray on the carry this time for North Quincy, Thomas and Murray, Murray fighting his way forward for a tough two-yard gain up to the 47. Yeah, number 42, Bobby Janig for the Presidents with a terrific play there. He uh, saw where the ball was going. It just came up and exploded into the gap. And uh, it was uh, Bobby who made a terrific play there to come up with that stop. And then, the you know, there were several white shirts in on the final gang tackling, but it was Janig who identified the, the gap and uh, really blew it open. 8.45 to go here in the third quarter. North Quincy on top 7 and nothing. Second down and 8 for North Quincy. Hines on the carry. 
Spins his way forward and gets up to midfield to the 50. Muhammad Khan in there to make the initial stop for the Presidents. Yeah, a very solid three yard gain after he was met in the backfield. Quincy had all kinds of uh, penetration there into the backfield and it looked like it'd be a stop for a loss, but Red Raiders kept working hard. Hines, again, very powerful. He's able to physically dominate out there and he's outside the tackles. He's faster than most of the kids on the field and inside the tackles, he's shown some terrific strength. Quincy with 10 men. Right at that line of scrimmage, Hines over to the right side. Nice tackle there by Ciro Mora. Hines would have gone further, but Mora was able to wrap him up by the legs. But nonetheless, a first down for Hines in the North Quincy Raiders. Yeah, great tackle by Mora. And he's getting up a little slowly there. He felt that because he did that one all on his own. And um, Red Raid is just grinding out the running game here, John, with terrific success. And there's... No reason to make any changes here until Quincy can somehow react to it. But one of the things you're seeing here, like I, I've seen uh, the linebackers of Quincy jumping around and being very active, but the, the problem is that uh, at the line level, whereas Quincy dominated in the first quarter, it's been uh, North Quincy taking control of the line play. With that last carry, Hines goes over 100 yards with 101. He's going to add to it here. Gets across the 40 up to about the 37-yard line. Yeah, Coach Craig will take this all day long. Just, you know, Hines right, Hines left. Staying inside the tackles, really grinding. They're running the clock down here, John, and they're just really doing a, a good job of controlling things. It's exactly what North wanted to do coming out of the locker room. And meanwhile, we're starting to see the hands on the hips for the presidents. They're getting worn down here, and they're going to have to reach down and see what they can do to react to this. Pitch to Hines over to the right side, and he gets tripped up maybe by one of his own men as he fell down. And Hines will get across the 35. Actually, they got to mark him down at the 35. The yeah, that's exactly what happened. You're right. Hines coming out for his first break, and they're bringing in a fresh set of legs and uh, in the backfield here. So, a little bit of a shift for North Quincy. I think we're going to see Tyler Lee. Nope, Lee's uh, breaking out. It's uh, Hunter McIsaac, a junior. And McIsaac will get the carry. Runs up the middle of the field. Nice push there by the offensive line. It'll be a first down for North Quincy. McIsaac gets up to about the 29. Well, the first half was pretty evenly played, John. It was back and forth. And um, we got a Quincy timeout here. So I was just going to comment on the fact that first half was pretty evenly played. Back and forth. Both teams able to do what they needed to do. Um, when they, you know, well, what they wanted to do rather when they needed to do it. But uh, in this third quarter, it's really been North Quincy's offensive line and Liam Hines kind of controlling what's going on out on the field. And Quincy's got to come up with an adjustment. Um, one of the big problems for Quincy is what we talked about at the beginning is depth and uh, the inability um, for Coach Carey to have some buttons to push here. Um, you got a lot of dinged up seniors. Um, now they've lost Beretti for the game, it appears, with the hamstring. So um, he does not have a lot of options, a lot of buttons to push. And uh, the kids are getting worn down a little. We had said earlier that you see that in the third quarter, then the beginning of the fourth quarter. But as the game comes down to the final few minutes, if it's still close, you'll see the adrenaline take over for the Quincy High kids. But right now, they're, they're a little sloggy, and they need to do what they can to hang in there, John. What's happened now? They've, uh, I guess they're, oh, they huddled, and now they're going to get their water. Yep. So Quincy with the timeout, with 5.39 left to go here in the third quarter. This is still the opening drive of this quarter, Jim, of the half, I should say. Uh, North Quincy has been just been progressively moving the ball down the field at four or five yards at a time. 
And they now stand at first and 10 at the Quincy 30 yard line. Yeah, and we talk about offense and defense being on the field and whatnot. Well, the problem for Quincy is when, when they come up with a stop or if they come up with a stop <laughs> and their offense comes on the field, it's going to be these same white shirts. Uh, they're just going to be, uh, you know, changing roles. Uh, but the fatigue will still be there. So need to do what they can to stop this drive here at the 30. And Cooper Hanson, the quarterback for North Quincy, looking to pass down the middle of the field. It's Colm Gary. He's open, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. Oh, great call and great execution. What a terrific pass by Hanson. Gary running a little seam route. He, went, he's, he was one of the tight ends we talked about on that formidable seven, the front seven for North Quincy. And uh, that time... Hines, it was interesting, John, because when you watch Liam Hines there, he broke to his left, which would indicate he was going to be running the ball behind Geary. And uh, Geary just took Bruce. off down, got behind the linebackers, and as soon as he did, um, the ball was delivered, and the Red Raiders with a great call coming out of that timeout. A fairly quick strike after that nice drive, so... Looking a great job by Hines there. And it just does go through. So as you said, Hines with a high snap is able to bring it down. And Murray puts it through. So with 5.31 left to go here in the third quarter, North Quincy will increase their lead to 14 to nothing. Yeah, that was a terrific job by Liam Hines. He gets the point after on that one. In fact, it's interesting, in that, time, that particular touchdown, Liam was the decoy. Um, the linebackers were keying off him, and he went to his left, and uh, just in front of him was uh, Colm Geary, lining up at his tight end spot where he'd been blocking so far, and he just took off down the seam. And beautifully designed play. Great, great call by the North Quincy coaching staff because they caught Quincy coming out of a timeout where I'm sure they knew the boys would be hearing about what they needed to do to stop the run. And then boom, quick strike, touchdown pass. Is that the first pass North Quincy's thrown? John? Uh, it's the second. Hanson had one for one yard uh, on a screen pass to, uh, to Colm Gary back, I think okay. it was in the first quarter. That might be why I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he can put that one on the books there. Terrific touchdown pass. So, All right, so as we said earlier, now the beleaguered Quincy presidents, they're going to switch their hats from defense to offense, and let's see what they can do. All right, Rodriguez will pick it up at the 22-yard line for North Quincy, excuse me, for Quincy, and he's going to get up to about the 38-yard line where he is brought down. I got to tell you, Rodriguez looked like a shortstop charging a slow roller there. He fielded that cleanly and just took off. And uh, presents are going to start with great field position here at the 38. So nice special teams work here. And now uh, the presidents are going to, is, uh, you see, see it. it looks like, yeah, Beretti's, uh Back out there, Drew Beretti. So this is very gutsy of him. Hopefully, we heard it was a hamstring, and those are really uh, tough injuries. But let's see what the presidents do here with their first possession of the second half in the starting quarterback on the center. And ball's going to get knocked away immediately there by Colm Gary, who came in from his end position, read that beautifully, jumped up, and just knocked it away. Yeah, geez, watch Beretti go to the sidelines here. You can tell that leg is just really bothering him. It looks like, and I don't know for certain, but it looks like it's his right leg that's the problem. And if that's the case, that's going to be another issue because that's, for a uh, right-handed quarterback, that's his plant leg. So that's going to take a little bit of adjustment for him. Um, so... Very gutsy effort here by Drew Beretti. Let's see what he and the president offense can do here. Second down and 10 for the presidents. Ball at the 38-yard line. 
Handoff goes to number six, Isaiah Steinberg, over to the right side, and great pursuit there. Ball comes loose, it looks like. And it looks like they're going to say Quincy has recovered, but... Yeah, I think the side judge is looking to mark the ball. He looked like the way he was coming in, that they're just going to go right to... They're going to call that a uh, not a fumble, it appears. You see both side judges indicating that. So, so they down the ball at the 40, and that's going to be a third down and eight. Um, Beretti is really lacking in mobility. It makes it made it difficult for him to uh, even do so, execute something as simple as a handoff. But you know, one of the keys behind the coaches, you can see at the top of your screen, um, number 44 on the sideline, and uh, you know, finally Matt Kelly's getting a little bit of a break, and it could be as simple as they're trying to give Matt a break and. Um, Beretti will come out for one or two possessions and um, then Matt will be back in to finish. We'll see. Third and eight for the Presidents. Beretti looking to pass and he's going to get to Jared Walker. Walker, nice, nice move there back. up to the middle of the field. He gets popped hard, but he's going to be, I was going to say, just shy of the first down up to the 50, excuse me, up to the 48 yard line. Yeah, and Colm Geary's going out now. Uh, it's going to be fourth and two. That's unfortunate. Ball Looks like he did something to his left arm. Let's take a quick look here. What happened? And yeah, not really sure. Oh, I think I don't know what happened. We can't tell on the replay. So, presidents break the huddle here. All right. So it is fourth and two. Matt Kelly in at quarterback, and actually looks like they're going to be punting it away. So we'll see if they do or not. And Marion Robinson, and it's going to be a fake to Jared Walker, and Walker has the first down and more across the midfield, and he'll get to the North Quincy 48-yard line, make it the 47. Gutsy call by the president coaching staff, um, and it's a sign that the presidents are showing no quit here. Uh, they knew how important this possession was. They're down 14-0. There's about three minutes to go in a fast-moving third quarter, and uh, Coach Carey and the Presidents know how important it is to get back in this ball game. And um, Beretti's back out. He's going to, they'll have him uh, operating out of the shotgun. He's going to have a split backfield out of the shotgun. So let's see what happens here. And Steinberg's going to get the carry over to the right side, crosses the 45, and will get knocked out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Nice little play where uh, it was a little toss sweep there, and they they got Steinberg just outside. You saw the good penetration by the uh, left defensive end for the Red Raiders, but um, nice job by Steinberg and Beretti to elude him and uh, get Steinberg outside. He turned it up for a very nice first down run, and... Um, now for the first time in a while, John, we're talking about the President defense, uh, the Red Raider defense. They've got to step up here. If uh, it's a, still a close game, even though North has been pretty dominating for two quarters now, but Red Raider defense needs to step up here as uh, courageous Drew Beretti trying to get the presidents down the field. And they're going to fake the pitch to the right side, and Steinberg, who came in motion, gets the ball, and it was just a little pitch in front to him, and he's going to be right at the first down marker, and they're indicating it's going to be a first down for the presidents. Yeah, if you look at Beretti, like he's now close to not being able to walk the poor he's kid, so they're going to get him off the field. That was a terrific play by Beretti. He showed great poise. Because um, the play, it was not executing as it was designed to, at least initially. But he showed good boys, he waited, and then Steinberg with a terrific run. So gutsy, gutsy stuff by Beretti, who's gone to the sidelines and he's being visited by the trainers and an EMT's going over as well. And now Matt Kelly's going to take over. Matt's got a little bit of a breather here. So he's going to be a little more refreshed. Let's see what that does for the presidents. All right, first and 10 for Quincy. And Kelly's going to keep it himself, trying to run it up the middle. And he's going to get hit and brought down quickly. Number 44, Matt Kelly. And we'll see if they give him a yard or not. It looks like it might be no game. Yeah, that was Sam Arcazine and uh, Matt Craig in on the tackle. 
two big strong guys taking down another big strong guy. So that was just um, power against power there, and North won that particular battle. It's going to be second and ten. Red Raider defense stiffening here. We'll see if they can't come up with a stop. Kelly's got one man in the backfield with him. That's Jared Walker who goes to Kelly's left. Kelly looking to pass over to the right side and is complete to Marion Robinson. And Robinson will get knocked out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Well, nicely done by Kelly. Um, nice. Nicely executed right play, and uh, out of bounds at the 31-yard line. It's going to bring up what about a third and third four here, and John? Four yep, ball at the 31 for a third and four, as you said, Jim, with 1:13 left to go here in the quarter. It's a relatively big play in the scheme of things. Red Raiders would love to come up with a stop, although we're definitely in four-down territory. And Oop. Kelly and Walker run into each other. North quickly takes advantage of it. And coming up there to make the tackle was Harry Guadiano for the North Quincy Raiders. And it's going to be a big loss all the way back to the 38. Yeah, Quincy trying to take a little bit of advantage of the uh, Red Raider aggressiveness. Um, for the president. The presidents there on offense, it, it almost looked like a figure skating routine there, the way they were flipping their hands right and left, trying to throw the Red Raiders off the trail, but it didn't work. Red Raiders had great penetration, got in the backfield, and came up with a big stop. So it's fourth and 11. It is four down territory, but uh, Quincy would have preferred to be fourth and four as they you know, they had get the ball up to a third and four, but big seven-yard loss makes this a tough fourth down play. All right, trips receivers to the left for Kelly, and he has two to his right. Empty backfield. Kelly looking to pass, looking down the right sideline, looking for Robinson, and it is incomplete. Nice coverage down there. Looked like it was Hunter McIsaac. Yeah, he had terrific inside position again. Uh, defensive, I should say, a red rated defensive back with terrific inside position again. Um, this time it was McIsaac and uh, knocked the ball down, did a good job. Sometimes uh, you can run into a situation, John, where a defensive back gets caught up in trying to make the interception, but McIsaac smartly knocked the ball down and um, made sure there was not a reception there and North Quincy's going to take over on down. So big, big stop by the Red Raider defense. And now we're probably going to see ground and pound here as uh, Red Raiders come out with that running set. All right, first and 10 for North Quincy at their own 38. 11 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Liam Hines will get the ball. And he is met there quickly. And he still fights his way forward. Muhammad Khan, also Bobby Janning coming up there to make the tackle for the Presidents. And that will be the end of the third quarter with North Quincy remaining on top by a score of 14 to nothing. Yeah, Hines was hit two yards out. That was a, a two-yard gain. And then he just really very powerfully nope, I grabbed another three and you take quarter. a second and eight and turn it into a second and five so as this quarter ends John Red Raiders with a, an impressive third quarter they had a long drive they took a little over seven minutes off the clock put points up on the board um, presidents responded with a drive of their own that stalled out at the red rate of 40. And uh, here we are now entering the fourth quarter in what is really still a reasonably close game. Um, it's just a two score game. And um, Quincy, unfortunately, with the injuries and the issues that are going on uh, with player and player players and player availability, um, it's gonna be tough for them to find answers here, but we saw no quit in that third quarter, and I'm sure they're going to continue to press. I was looking over on the sidelines, and I see Beretti over there, and I don't see him coming back. He's, he's trying to stretch out his leg and everything, but then when he gets up and tests it, 
it looks like it just hasn't been there for him, John. All right, so here we go with the fourth quarter, and Liam Hines is going to take the ball for North Quincy. Great run there by Liam Hines. Fight his way forward through a tackle and gets up to midfield for the first down. Yeah, man, he is just out there blasting. Um, number 42, Bobby Janik in there again. Right in, trying to make the hit, and he got up a little slowly after getting blasted by Hines. Um, Liam Hines, 18 carries for 121 yards and a touchdown as well here this afternoon for North Quincy. Hines going to try to add on to that carry here. Finds a hole there, crosses midfield, and will get up to about the 47-yard line. Liam Hines on the carry. <laughs> Jeez. To the 40 Getting the biggest kick out of watching Brandon Baker operate. Um, he just pled his case again to the officials after a little dust up with a white shirt <laughs> and he's walking away without a penalty flag so Brandon if you watch this replay I strongly urge you to consider law school buddy you've been very impressive so far as an advocate with the zebras move on up to judicial robes <laughs> make some money at it all right, second down for North Quincy Hines again on the carry, cuts it outside and we'll see where they mark him down. It looks like it's at about the 43-yard line. I got to tell you, uh, another Quincy player is going off the field after making the tackle on Hines. Um, he's just really showing some powerful running, and and kids are really getting banged up here. It's tough to see. You don't want to see kids get hurt, but um, you know, Hines is a senior this year, so he's a little older and more mature as it is, but uh, the working out that he did over the course of the off season, you can really see it as Quincy kids are going to the sideline after taking him down. Third and three now for North Quincy. Hines up the middle, gets the first down, across the 40-yard line, and he'll get brought down at about the 38, maybe make the, the 37, excuse me, and again, it will be enough to move the chains for North Quincy. I'd like to see Matt Kelly, number 44, out there, still clapping his hands, trying to get the boys fired up here. Um, Fresh set of downs for the Red Raiders, but also for the president defense. They've, they've got to try to come up with a stop. This is the spot in the field where the Red Raiders held earlier on the Quincy possession, John. So presidents need to see if they can't muster something and come up with a defensive stop because uh, they're down two scores, but we're ticking down under 10 minutes here. So uh, they've got to start making some things happen if they want to get back into this game. Another six-yard gain for Hines on that last carry. Brings up a first down and 10. Thomas Murray with the ball this time for North Quincy, and he'll get tackled and stop with forward progress at the 35-yard line. Yeah, Murray's a, another guy who's a strong runner. Um, he was a little hesitant as he hit the line. You've seen Hines identify where he's going to go uh, pretty quickly, and then he gets there. Uh, that time Murray was doing a little bit of dancing, he didn't see anything. And, um, you know, his lack of familiarity being back there getting the ball could be part of it because Liam now has been uh, the bulk of the carries and that helps him get into a rhythm here that Murray was not, or is not, and wasn't on that particular play. But Murray's uh, playing the up back position as well, he's blocking well and Red Raiders with a second and eight. I formation behind Hanson. They send Brendan Hines in motion, and they got pitch it to Liam Hines over to the right side. Hines crosses the 35, and will get up to about the 30-yard line, maybe make it to 29, and he'll be about two yards shy of the first down. You know, it's a shame that uh, there's a part of my brain that needs to be shocked to help me remember names better. I just don't remember names, but I do remember prior games where we've seen dominating running backs on Thanksgiving Day. Quincy Highs had a couple of kids who just dominated start to finish, and those are the games Quincy High won back during the Bob Noble era. 
Um, but today we're seeing a game where a running back is just really taking over the field here. And when that happens, normally on Thanksgiving Day, that determines the outcome. So for the Red Raiders and Liam Hines, things are looking good right now. Hines again over to the right side, spins his way forward. Another great move there by Liam Hines on the spin move and we'll get all the way up to the 20 yard line. Result of that play is another Raider first down to the 20. Yeah, North not in any rush here. We're ticking down when this play after this play is over, we're going to be at about 7.30. We'll be under seven minutes. North happy to take its time and keep the ball out of the president's hands offensively. But um, they're just continuing to grind and running inside the tackles, as they say. Meaning this is a real, like, just powerful performance by the Red Raider offense. All right, Liam Hines again on first and ten for North Quincy. Oh, Balls come loose. On the play. Let's see who covered it. And it looks like North Quincy has recovered. They got to spot the ball at the 19-yard line. Excuse me, get the 18-yard line. Yeah, that was Reen Bago and also Brendan Hines was in on it. Uh, both very alert. Uh, the, the initial hit was made by Bobby Janig, number 42. I mentioned earlier, um, he went out. He looked like he got... A little bit uh, bopped on a particular play after tackling Hines, and he went out. Well, he came in and really blasted Hines on that play and uh, prompted the fumble. But an alert Bago on the ball quickly. Uh, Brendan Hines as well was there. So North covers its own fumble, and uh, they're now it's second and eight. Liam Hines now at 151 yards rushing on this afternoon. 6.15 left to go in the ball game. Hunter McIsaac, number 22 on the carry this time, over to the right side, crosses the 15, and they're going to stay with forward progress. He gets up to the 14-yard line. Nice job by McIsaac. He took that ball outside, and, and see, there you see the difference. Like, Hunter is, is not the physically dominating type guy. He's 165 pounds and only a junior. Um, Third and three. He's 40 pounds lighter than Liam Hines, and you could see on a play like that, you know, that was a more prototypical high school run where he got outside, got a little green space, and then when the white shirt showed up, they were able to blast him out of bounds. But Hines has been overpowering those white shirts so far, and seeing it in context makes it all the more impressive when you see another running back from north. and the way Quincy kids react and take them down. Four yard gain from McIsaac on that last play. He remains in as the eye back and he'll get the ball up to the middle and he'll get up to about the 10 yard line. Should be enough for the first down. We'll see where they spot him down and with forward progress. Yeah, forward progress. And it looks like it should be enough for the first down as the side officials come in and spot the ball at the 10. Yeah, great individual effort by McIsaac. He did a terrific job once he got hit. And now he's going to go out. They're going to bring Hines in after giving him a uh, couple of couple of plays off, and uh, greeted by his twin brother Brendan. They're a great story, um, Brendan and Liam, and their older brother. Um, their their mom had some terrible health issues and passed away when Brendan and Liam were relatively young, and um, they've been raised by their dad, Paul Hines, who's a lawyer here in Quincy and he, he's just done a terrific job with them and they've really matured into quite a pair, very supportive of each other. They're both going to go to Mass Maritime, John. Alright, well on that last play, again it was a first down, so we're going to get first and goal now from the 10. Hines Whoa. gets a high pitch over to the left side and is able to pick some positive yardage all the way up to about the 5 yard line. Make it. Yep, the guy saying knocked out of bounds at the five. Yeah, you saw number 42, Bobby Janik. He almost got there. He was just half a step from uh, Thanksgiving Day or Turkey game, we have to call it, fame. Because uh, there would have been nothing but green space in the other end zone in front of him if uh, he were just a half a step ahead on that one. But 
Liam caught the ball and got it in. I was mentioning just as they broke the huddle that Liam and Brendan are both going to go to Mass Maritime and they're both playing football and baseball down there. So that's terrific to see athletes from Quincy when they're seniors getting opportunities at the next level. Second and goal from the five now for North Quincy. Hines with the ball. Up the middle and will go into the end zone for the touchdown. Liam Hines punches it in from five yards out. And late flags are thrown here as well. Not sure what that one's about. It was thrown by the far side judge. Let's see what the call is. I think it happened after the play. Yeah. So we'll see exactly what the call is though. It's going to be a personal foul, I think, of some nature. On uh, sportsmanlike. Okay. That's unfortunate. Uh, a little frustration on the part of uh, the presidents there. And that's reflective of the fact that there's just been no quit at all in the Quincy High presidents. They've been battling the whole way. And just a little bit of frustration setting in there after that. Liam Hines touchdown. So Raiders extend their lead and um, basically put this game on ice, we'd have to say, John, with that third score. And yeah, it's 4 5 left to go with the point after attempt to come. And it looks like they're going to um, assess the penalty on the kickoff as well. So Quincy will definitely pin back even further. Coming out here is Thomas Murray for the extra point attempt for North Quincy. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. Great so job by Murray, blasting it through. So, Red so Raiders executing uh, perfectly on their points after there, and um, it's a 21 nothing ball game, John. Want well, to remind our viewers, you can log on to QATV's website at qatv.org for program schedules, membership information, and more information about public access TV in general. So again, we encourage you to log on to our website at qatv.org. This game will also be replayed on QATV Channel 8 and on qatv.org slash sports. So if you are looking for the replay or want to catch it again, uh, again, on demand on our website, and you can go to our program schedule and see when it will be aired on QATV Channel 8 this coming week. Well, it's a lot of excitement now on the North Quincy sideline as it sets in that uh, they're going to take home a win today. Um, with that touchdown, I think they, you know, the outcome of this game is, is understood. And we'll have to see how the final four minutes go. But notwithstanding the fact that uh, the Quincy High kids would certainly like to have a lot of things different today, they've really accorded themselves very well under tough circumstances, John. Um, this was a very physically dominating performance by the Red Raiders, but the Presidents kept, you know, the fight and uh, they kept pressing and they s sustained a couple of setbacks during the game with the loss of their quarterback, Beretti, and who steps in but the linebacker, Matt Kelly, to do what he can. and. Uh, the offense for Quincy did execute well, but just not well enough today. Kelly's another one. I mentioned the Hines brothers earlier going on to Mass Maritime, and Matt Kelly's going on. Pretty sure it's St. Anselm's. I think I have that right to play football, which is terrific. As I said, you like to see athletes from Quincy. We, we have a lot of students go on successfully to the next level, but you like to see the athletes as well, and um, we've had some great success stories leave the Quincy Public Schools and go on, and Kelly and the Hines, and there are others, I'm sure, um, but uh, those three names in particular come to mind today as guys who are performing here on the field today at the Turkey game and will be playing again next fall elsewhere. All right, so they're going to say that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty was against North Quincy, and the officials had indicated it was against the presidents, but it's yeah, against North. I, th I, th I thought it was against North Quincy because I saw what the gesture was by the side judge about what 
the problem was. By Rodriguez. All right, Rodriguez will take it for the presence at the 35-yard line, and he's going to have a nice run, and he'll get up to the North Quincy 48. 48. Rodriguez has been a great story this season and today's game. Uh, Gabriel has consistently performed very well here. That's the third straight kick where we've seen him charge it like a, you know a charging shortstop, and he has. Um, you know, played the ball cleanly and um, taken the ball down the field. And on this occasion, Quincy's going to start on the north side of the field. They're going to be at the North Quincy 48. So, again, terrific field position, courtesy of Gabe Rodriguez. All right, North Quincy had some trouble getting the correct personnel out into the field. So head coach Ryan Craig will have to call a timeout. I think we uh, we can identify who the offending party was. <laughs> Nothing worse than that happened when you're, you know, your number's called, but you're elsewhere. So, but the Red Raiders have it together now, and um, with just under four minutes to go, they need to protect a 21 nothing lead. I think at this point now the goal for North Quincy is to preserve a shutout, and the goal for Quincy is at least to get some points on the board here. So it'll be interesting to see how this possession for the President's works, John. Real quick rundown, Liam Hines, um, certainly star of the game here today for both teams. Hines with 26 carries for 161 yards and two touchdowns as well. Cooper Hanson, the quarterback for the Raiders, is two for two passing for 31 yards and a touchdown. That touchdown pass went to Colm Gary, and it was a 30-yard touchdown pass. And those are the three scores for North Quincy here today. Again, with 3.59 left to go here in the game with a timeout down on the field. Yeah, and from the Quincy High perspective, I just mentioned Rodriguez. Matt Kelly, just a terrific game. It's, it may not be a winning effort, but it was a winning individual effort by Matt Kelly as he tried to plug the gap by, you know, caused by the loss of Beretti. And uh, Drew Beretti himself, even though he could barely walk, came out and tried to contribute. Right, Kelly's pass is complete to number 14, Will Plouffe, over to the left side. And Plouffe will get up to the 44-yard line, make it the 43. Yeah, nice job by Plouffe there. He, uh, he could have just turned the ball out, gone out of bounds. Jeez, we got, we've got a guy down now on this play. This is another one who's, well, looks like he's going to be able to get up with a little bit of help and hopefully get himself off the field. That's uh, number five for the Red Raiders, Tyler Lee, who's uh, another one of the seniors. A couple of years back, John, I recall him getting some... Uh, you know, turns in the backfield, and um, he's a he's a terrific runner and a great athlete. Hopefully, that knee's okay. I think Lee's uh, trying to stretch out maybe a uh, a cramp there. He's been nursing that. I've seen him a couple times getting slowly off the field here in the fourth quarter. And Kelly trying to pass, trying to get out of harm's way over to the right side. He's going to keep it himself. Puts his head down, makes one man miss, and nice run there by Matt Kelly all the way up to the 40-yard line. Yeah, terrific job by Kelly. That was a design to go downfield. Got blown up in the backfield, and Matt's upset at uh, some of the banging that went on there at the end of the play. So uh, he did a terrific job of scrambling and turning what was a probable loss into a gain for the Presidents. So it's third and short, correct? Third and about two. Yeah, and it's going to be pass is complete to Marion Robinson up to the 38-yard line, and we'll see where they spot, spot his forward progress. Yeah, that side judge was out of position on that play, so, but uh, referee took control of that. To the 38-yard line of North Quincy. So they need to get to the 38, and that's where they mark him down. So it'll be a first down for the Presidents. 2.15 left to go in the ball game. Kelly wide open to the left. He's going to keep it himself. 
Nice block there by Ciro Mora to spring him Matt free, Kelly. and Kelly will get knocked out of bounds. Out of bounds by number 12, Jamal Matt and they're going to stay up to the 20, 26 yard line. I'll tell you, senior Jamal Maximilian made that tackle, and that was just a first rate clean tackle. Took a big guy, Kelly, down cleanly, and uh, just a great tackle by Maximilian. We haven't talked about the North defensive backs. Uh, because they haven't seen much action. That time, that was Liam Hines. Um, Liam Hines uh, on the play. Um, but uh, we haven't said much about the defensive backfield of the Red Raiders because they have not, frankly, been that busy. But Maximilian looked great on that tackle. That was just, we had commented on the Red Raider tackling when we saw them earlier in the year. And, um, you know, they're a well-coached group in that regard. So they did a good job, Maximilian did a good job there and then followed up by Liam Hines breaking up that pass. So with the pass break up, the clock stopped at 154. Quincy is uh, just inside the 30. Yeah, ball spot at the 27 yard line, trying to set up his screen, complete to Marion Robinson, excuse me, that's Steinberg on the carry. And he'll have enough for the first down. He's going to get up to the 17-yard line, it looks like. Well, this is reminiscent of that drive at the end of the first half. You know, and this is the thing about uh, the adrenaline. When the kids know the clock's running down, the Quincy presidents, they, they get a little bit of surge of energy, and they're able to perform here. So let's see if they can't get something on the board. Uh, they get a timeout there, so... Time out, President. Want to make an adjustment, but they're eager to try to at least get points on the board here, and I'm sure that eagerness is countered by the Red Raiders who want to preserve a shutout. You know, uh, we commented on earlier, or I commented on Maximilian's tackle, and I think he hurt his left arm. Uh, he's been holding his left arm for a while now since. That tackle occurred up in the elbow area. You can see him on the right of your screen. And, um, you know, another guy who looks like he's going to leave this game a little dinged up. Perhaps when it's over, he'll depart the field dinged up as opposed to having to leave the game, I should say. But uh, another kid who's got a joint injury. We've seen a couple of knee injuries, and um, you see number 12 trying to shake it out. And that's what happens when you take on a big guy like Kelly, too. John, one thing about this game, I mean, they're start to finish, it's going to be close to a two-hour performance, you know. Um, it's just been a pure commitment to the ground game by both teams, and the result has been that the, the clock's been running most of the way. Jim, on the very bottom of your screen, it looks like there's some uh, players with a bucket full of water, getting ready to try to move it closer to, to head coach Ryan Craig. Oh, so we'll have to keep Those, an eye on that as well. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's got to be a group of freshmen or sophomores because I would not want to be the kid who dumped water on Ryan Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I ball at the 16-yard line for Quincy. 131 left to go in the game. Kelly pass is complete to Sierra Mora, and he's going to be inside the 10 with forward progress up to about the, maybe about the seven yard line. We'll see where they spot him. I got to tell you, I give Kelly great credit because he is identifying receivers quickly. He sees someone open and boom, the ball is gone. Hand off to Jared Walker, and he's going to get met in the backfield. Uh, excuse me, that's to number 32 on the carry for North Rodriguez. R R yep, Gabriel Rodriguez. Yeah. And they're going to say no gain on that play. The yeah, it was interesting. Um, both uh, Matt Craig and Mike Gorman were trying to strip the ball there. Under a minute to play. Kelly looking, looking. Has some space up the middle of the field. And he's going to be right at the first down marker. We'll see if they give him the first down. Timeout is called on the field by the Presidents. What a hit by Matt Craig. You saw number 44 come in and just blast the running back. So. 37 seconds remain in the game. We've got 37 seconds left, and the presidents call a timeout, John, with that stop. It's fourth down and short. 
Um, they could pick up a first down without getting the touchdown. They have to get the ball just about to the six yard line. So first down is an option for the president. So they have to get to the end zone. But how many timeouts will they have left now, John? Uh, that is their last timeout they just called. So they have uh, no more remaining. I've got that again. So they're going to have to look at spiking the ball or whatever. We'll see. So, John, what are the numbers of the kids who have this uh, ice bucket going? I, I, I just wanted to check their uh, <laughs> class there. And the seniors probably told, like, three freshmen, you get the ice, you know, you get the bucket ready. Because, as I said, um, of all the coaches, I might dump, dump the uh, Gatorade on Martin Dunham if I were at North Quincy <laughs> High School. That's who I'd pick out and target. Martin is a product of the QA TV sports department, and he's been coaching at North for a while now. So, well, I can tell you, Jim, uh, Colm Gary just moved a little bit closer down the field, so Colm maybe he's Gary. taking responsibility for it now. We'll see what happens. Oh, geez, yeah, I see Gary, and then I see big number 66, Brandon Baker. So. Gary's bringing his attorney with him <laughs> to this dunking. Back to action, and Quincy will be stopped on fourth down. Nice pursuit there by the Raiders. And looked like leading the charge there was Matt Craig for North Quincy. And looks like they're just going to let the clock continue to tick down here. And we'll see if uh, our cameraman, Ryan... Uh, Ryan McQuaid, Mc, McQuaid excuse me, I keep on saying Ryan Mc, McQuaid. There we go. We'll see him following the guys there in the middle of your screen. Yeah. Baby, I'll tell you what. Mr. Baker's got to prepare his closing argument oh, after that dunking. <laughs> you know? So. Well, it's a real mixed emotion type event when, uh, when this happens, the Thanksgiving Day or Turkey game ends because you've got pure glee on one side of the field and just uh, despondent athletes on the other. And in this particular case, the red shirts get to march down Hancock Street with the Turkey Day Trophy, which uh, I'm assuming they're going to award. Yeah, I see it out there. I see Superintendent Kevin Mulvey. This will be the first time I believe he awards the trophy. He's at the 40-yard line with the trophy. And um, we've got... The Red Raiders and Presidents all gathering up and sharing congratulations. So, good sportsmanship by the Presidents who are battling all the way here to the final buzzer. So, I give Quincy High great credit, John, um, in a losing effort. They show great determination. And uh, it's the Red Raiders' day to collect the trophy. All right, so again, final score here, North Quincy 21, Quincy nothing. Uh, like I said, Jim, it wasn't actually Thanksgiving, but it was still a great Thanksgiving Day game here uh, between the two teams. And, um, you know, really the big turning point on the game was at the end of the second quarter, the last play of the first half, where Quincy had fourth and goal, and North Quincy was able to hold. Matt Kelly couldn't hold on to the snap as he was trying to punch it into the end zone. And that could have tied the game at seven uh, going into the half. Half, but I think momentum really swung there and then to begin the third quarter North Quincy came out had a long drive down the field for a touchdown and that kind of really sealed it there uh, and then I said Jim Liam Hines led the way 161 yards for North Quincy and that's where they just turned it over to him for the rest of the game to kind of pound the ball down the field and um, not much the presidents can do after that yeah, well, we're not going to have audio down here for the presentation, but and it would be great to hear what Superintendent Mulvey has to say. He's a proud North Quincy grad himself, so um, Rick DeCristofaro used to always enjoy handing off the trophy to the presidents as a former president himself. I mean, obviously, they, they would delight in either team, but... Uh, he had a North Quincy alum, now the superintendent, uh, Kevin Mulvey, handing the trophy over, and there'll be a triumphant walk down Hancock Street with that, consistent with a long-standing Raider tradition. So, 
That's great stuff. And I always get a big kick when I see J.J. Niamke out there, the athletic director for North, because, you know, he's a guy who just starred on the field for the Quincy High presidents while he was, uh, you know, at Quincy, and now he's the athletic director at North. So I, I get a kick out of seeing him in red and black here, but he's out there with the superintendent, and now Coach Craig is addressing the triumphant Red Raiders and um, perhaps uh, going to set up Brandon Baker to start running <laughs> laps around the field before he gets to go home. Jimmy talked earlier in the game about some, uh, you know, the Quincy High running backs that have had good games on Thanksgiving in the past. J.J. Niemski was one of those guys as well uh, on that team that went to the playoffs for the Presidents. Uh, just sent him to Coach Bob Noble. Uh, but now the athletic director at North Quincy. And I uh, want to give uh, thanks to J.J. and also to the Quincy High athletic director, Kevin Mahoney, uh, for all their help they've been giving us in QA TV uh, since they've been the athletic director. So I want to give a shout out to both Joe, JJ and Kevin. Yeah, they're both terrific. They're doing a great job. And sports is particularly important in a city like Quincy. You know, sometimes for some of these kids, it's the reason they're, they're going to school. It's a motivator, at least, for getting into school. And it's all part of their development. And a lot of the athletes learn life lessons and develop life friendships out on the field. So the athletic departments in both schools um, doing a great job, led by these two fine young men, Kevin Mahoney and J.J. Niemke. And uh, today's a day for the programs, the athletic programs, to shine. And shine they did. So it's a great effort and a real pleasure to bring this game. A little odd to do so in April, but uh, it was great nonetheless to get the game in. And uh, regrettably, a few kids are dinged up, but let's hope that uh, those athletes, you know, recover well and quickly and, you know, move into, they're going to go right to like spring baseball or lacrosse or, you know, the spring sports. It's going to be interesting. Well, real quick, we want to uh, thank all of the crew here at uh, Quincy Access TV that have come down here today. Not as much, all as, of them? Yeah, not as many <laughs> as we normally do. Uh, but we want to thank uh, Chris Potter, who's been our engineer and director, and Ryan McWade, who's been on camera here today. Uh, both Ryan and Chris have been here at all the games uh, at the stadium this year, so we want to thank them for coming out and doing a great job uh, to do everything that we can to bring all the action to everyone live here on QATV8 and also on our website as well. Uh, so, Jim any last thoughts or we want to wrap it up here well, well I have plenty of thoughts I could share <laughs> but you know I'll pass on it's very kind of you to turn the mic over to me but uh, no reason to we'll let folks get on with their Sundays this is being shown on us shown live on a Sunday and uh, if as we said before the, there'll be replays of plenty I'm sure that kids are going to want to watch it over the course of the week so Hope you enjoyed our coverage today, and we'll look forward to being back to a more full veteran stadium in the fall and kind of a more normalized athletic program, John, uh, which will include QA TV coverage in the fall. Certainly will. So again, for uh, Ryan McWade, Chris Potter, and Jim Timmons, my name is Jonathan Caleri. Congratulations to the North Quincy Raiders winning the 88th matchup between the Raiders and the Presidents by a score of 21 to nothing. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of QA TV Sports, and we will see you next time.